How about there? Well, we've got a crack, cracking day for a, another adventure. Um, I mean, it's it's February, and the, the forecast is for it to rise to about 15 degrees, which is fairly unusual for this time of year. But we've got about 11 miles ahead of us, and we're going to visit three castles. Three castles. <laughs> so we better not hang about. Google satellite view, you can see Great Cumbria Island at the top and Largs in the bottom right. We leave the Ayrshire coastal path at the marina and enter Kelburn Estate. Passing over Diamond Hill, we then drop down back onto the Ayrshire coastal path, which takes us around Hunderston towards Port and Cross. There's nothing worse when you're reading the pee than passing lots of closed public toilets. The whole promenade from the centre of Largs all along here is bristling with closed public toilets. <laughs> and I'm desperate for a pee. I'm hoping there'll be something in the marina that will uh, allow me to do the business. Um, this is the Battle of Largs Memorial. That pointy thing there, it uh, celebrates or commemorates the, the Battle of Largs in 1263 when Alexander III led a Scots army against um, a whole load of Vikings uh, who were led by King Hakon of Norway. And uh, yeah, apparently there was a, something like maybe between a hundred and 200 Viking ships, a portion of which landed sort of here. In the, the final stages of the battle saw hundreds of Scots heavy cavalry uh, send the Vikings back to their ships and sent them packing. Well, this is the marina, just behind the camera. Uh, at this point, uh, we're going to just 
cross over the railway line there, uh, the, the Ayrshire Coastal Path will also cross over the railway line and the Ayrshire Coastal Path at that point will I think just uh, follow the, the main road for quite for a bit. Uh, we're going to leave the Ayrshire Coastal Path at that point. I know I said that this is a walk on the Ayrshire Coastal Path but we're leaving it, just, we, we will rejoin it about four miles later. Um, there's two reasons for doing that. One, I, w I want to have a look at Kelburn Castle. Uh, and also it will allow us to uh, gain a little bit of height. N not too much. I mean, you can get magnificent views. You know, uh, the Clyde, uh, Clyde Coast uh, from the shore here. Looking towards Millport and Great. Cumbria Island, the Isle of Bute, and somewhere over there, uh, at the Isle of Arden. But a, a wee bit of height will allow us to get slightly better views of all that stuff. Um, I mean, I think if you were on the Ayrshire Coastal Path, y you would want to have a look at Kelburn Castle. You know, uh, it would be silly to come this close and not have a look at it, because as I think we're going to find out, it's a pretty magnificent castle. Yeah, it, the Ayrshire Coastal Path actually runs along the side of the railway line from here and not along the side of the road. And we're not going to go over the railway line, although we, we could do, uh, but we're going under the railway line because uh, there's no cars go under the railway line and I don't think there's a footpath above it. Uh, once we hit the main road, we'll turn right for a short bit and then we'll enter the Kelburn estate with any luck. This is Kelburn Castle. Um, when you come along the, the main road there, if you just pop in the first entrance that you come to, um, uh, it passes, it's a small road that passes through uh, a golf course, no vehicles. Um, I mean, that, that's a paint job, isn't it? It's a sort of paint job that would serve the castle well as camouflage if the whole of Ayrshire was suddenly and quite strangely turned into a giant cartoon. I mean, castles are generally thought of as grim, sombre places. You know, they're not meant to be happy places. But this is a happy castle. And I just love it. But whatever you do, don't just go wandering in because it is somebody's house <laughs> and you could find yourself in some trouble. Um, I, I think there are perhaps tours now and then. Uh, by all means, check the internet, find out when they are. It's that easy. Okay, fingers crossed. I'm playing it by ear here. I can see new houses on my right hand side. 
obviously in the area of Fairley and they won't be in my map as I think I've said, said on a number of previous occasions I am my own worst enemy when you're in the great outdoors it's a major sin to have a map that's out of date All being well, this should take us to Fairley Castle, uh, our second castle of the day. They're still building these houses, these are brand spec new. And you know, sometimes, and I see it in far too many places where they're building a lot of houses in lovely wee places, and uh, there's no shops. I mean, having said that, I dare say, I would imagine there probably is a shop or two, unfairly. Uh, but, you know, I have seen it in other places where there's no shops and you're expected to have a car or travel on the bus in order to get your weekly shopping. Yeah, this is a good track. I'm feeling good about this. Fairly Castle. Here we come. Well, that's Fairley Castle there, a 15th century tower or keep, a typical form of a lot of these Scottish towers, big squat stone thing. When I uh, came off that substantial path and hit the small road there just at the tower, I wasn't sure which way to go because the the tower actually sits on the edge of a quite a steep ravine and there was clearly not an easy way through it, over it and I didn't know whether to go left or right but when you come to that road out of the tower if you just turn left and just a few metres up a, an old stone cobbled path hello there uh, you'll see uh, a path on the right that'll take you through the gate there I mean, towers like this were at one time essentially just somebody's house. Uh, a defendable house, obviously. The Scotland's full of towers like this. Some still lived in, some getting renovated like that one there, and there's some that are in bits, and just a collection of rubble. But um, you would have to have had a fair bit of money to be able to afford a, a house like that. The ordinary man would never have been able to afford that. If I was alive way back in the 15th century, I wouldn't have been living as hard like that. That's for certain. I'd have probably been washing their underwear or something. This is quite a steep incline, just in an open field. Um, there's no obvious path here. And I actually had to ask the farmer. But I kind of already knew more or less which way I wanted to go. It's always nice to get confirmation. And I can see a sort of what you might call a kind of style there. And I'm keeping to this side of the woodland. Uh, at some point we'll be on uh, the hill, or, n not the high hills just behind, although even these high hills aren't that high. Uh, 
sort of highish hills. Uh, and, uh, hopefully we'll pick up a track and then we'll, we'll reach a, a, a minor road that will take us down back onto the, the main road and the uh, Escher Coastal Path. But you can see what sort of views we're dealing with here. Just stunning, you know, stunning. In fact, I might have my lunch up here somewhere. Beautiful. Well, come up the steep field there. Uh, if when you look at the map, we're essentially skirting this little hillock thing here. But I'm hoping you can see in the in the distance there. There's just a kind of line of little hills. I mean, there's higher stuff just behind them. We're not going up there, but you may be able to see the sun glinting off a metal gate. And I very much suspect, 95% certain, that there's a track, a well-defined track, just there, following the line of the electricity pylons. And that's going to head in that direction and arrive at, a, as I said earlier, a minor, very minor road. And that'll take us downhill, um, back onto the main road and back onto the Ayrshire Coastal Path. So while I was initially a, a little bit, not concerned, but I was just not 100% certain what was going on. I knew roughly which direction I wanted to go. But it's always nice when suddenly things appear just as you had hoped. <laughs> and as you realise that you're not uh, hopelessly lost. That said, if there's not a track <laughs> on the other side of that wall and gate, then we're in big trouble. But uh, there will be. And all been well, I'll see you on that minor road. will take us downhill towards the, the main road and we'll, we'll rejoin the Ayrshire Coastal Path which will then take us round the side of uh, Hunterson Nuclear Power Station and onto Port and Cross and you know it's just I mean this is just so utterly beautiful I mean the, the, the track in the hills that came along there was Stunning as well. It was just there was nobody up there. It was all alone. It became a little bit kind of boggy laterally, but on the whole, it was just cracking. And what's happening just now is we're looking down in the first of Clyde. Um, sort of to the right there. Don't know if you can pick it out or not, but you've got Great Cumbria Island and Millport uh, and somewhere actually I don't know if that is Great Cumbria Island anyway, somewhere down there in amongst all that water is Great Cumbria Island, the Little Cumbria Island the Isle of Butte and sort of leftish is, is the Isle of Arden I don't see Arden, I've lost Arden that might be worthy of a 101 phone call. Hello? Hello? Yes? It's about Arden. I flushed it. I flushed Arden. Hello? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just... What a view, man, you know. I've never been on this road. And there's always something quite magical about, you know, they talk about the magic of the Clyde Coast. This is it. This is it. And my God, it is magical too.
that's us in Porton Cross. There's nothing really to the place other than a, a castle and a harbour, or a jetty rather, a jetty with a hole in it and a few houses. It was a hell of a walk, I'll tell you. Um, and I found Arden. You won't be able to see it because it's very faded. The camera would never pick that up. My eyes are struggling to pick it up. It's a term you never really hear in the weather forecast. You know, you never hear them saying, well, today the weather will be faded. But today it's faded, you know. That's maybe a new term for them. Anyway, although I'm ending the video here, I, I am actually continuing on the Ayrshire Coastal Path to West Kilbride, simply so that I can get a bus back to civilization. And in that small town, there's a street called Happy Hills. And that combined with what I can only describe as a happy castle back in the Kelburn estate, it's been quite a, a happy walk and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Burns, I'll see you again.